Um, I'm uh, Marit Kummen. I uh, come from the Netherlands actually. And I'm, uh, I'm a cartographer of the Chain Crusade. So I deal in visualizations specifically of, of space, of spatial things. Uh, I've been doing that some time, and, and what I want to talk about uh, today is uh, our, our ideas and our uh, experiments in using kinetic maps specifically um, in a web services environment. So it links in the sense between the two previous talks in that we use data from web services, not usually the very big ones like Amazon, but in the similar um, surroundings, let's say the data comes from services somewhere, and we want to use a good UX, and we want to use a good way of telling the, the story of the data in maps, in specific thematic maps about, about certain themes. And uh, what I want to present today is especially some experiments with, that we did about combining and comparison tools for these thematic maps. So I, I was trained as a cartographer actually using these kind of tools. I, uh, I, I still know how to work with a rotary pen and I can still engrave, I guess, I, I, guess I still do. I <laughs> tried it for a long time. But my tools have changed quite a bit because most of my, my visualization work, my maps are nowadays made using tools like this. So, uh, this is a web store where you type JavaScript and, and, and CSS and stuff. And people t uh, tell me, well, your work has really changed. Yeah? You're now a computer programmer, you're no longer a designer. And I, I disagree because what I, what I do, my task is still the same. I want to show the story of the data. So there, there's a story in the data that I want to tell. Uh, and I want to tell that, that story using my tools. Uh, with my tools are not so much the computer or the, the, the engraved uh, needle, they are the visual, the visual uh, expressions that I can make of this data. That's basically what I do. I want to show this data and I want to show this with what, what I like to call the cartographic intent. So there's a, there's a message, there's a thing that I want to reach with my visualization. So this is quite different from some of the other examples of visualizations that we've seen today and yesterday, where you are looking into the data using visual. That's a different way of, of, of using visualizations. Is that's to discover things, to discover, to find the story in the data. I'm now talking about telling the story that we think is in the data to a, a more general user group um, than just the research. And you can do that in several ways. You can do it in, in relatively simple ways, specifically if the story is, is, uh, is relatively simple. <coughs> so this is another example that you saw there. But this is uh, something we call uh, land grabbing, uh, where, where uh, companies and, 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 uh, and institutions from some countries uh, grab uh, uh, land, uh, mostly illegally, in other parts of the world. So you, can, you can try to tell that story of where that takes place by, by using a relatively simple flow map like this, and you can see the big players are the UK actually, uh, to my surprise, get a grab a lot of land in, in Australia, uh, but the other way around, uh, there's also uh, uh, countries like India that you might not suspect of these kind of things. And this is a nice way of talking, of, of showing that story by, by, by showing you uh, where the biggest flows of land grabbing, which are not actual flows that take place, there are, there are, there are things that are not really seen in the, in the, in the real world, of course, but where they take place. The problem, of course, is the story becomes a bit more complicated, is that you can get uh, troubles in actually telling that story, uh, seeing all the data we saw yesterday, a very good example where, where it's uh, difficult to sometimes see all the data, for example, if you have a lot of data. In this particular example, I only show the, the big plays, and if I actually make my threshold smaller, then it becomes a mess. You can't really see anything uh, from this. So part of, of the conclusion that you have to make is not that a map is, might not always be uh, the, the best uh, way to show it. You can show the same thing, of course, also in diagrammatic form, uh, where you where you show uh, the sort of the Senke, Senke <coughs> diagram of the same <coughs> flows, and that makes it a bit more uh, uh, possible to show all the small flows. And it also uh, allows you to show things that you cannot see in that other example, where, for example, some counties are both uh, victims of land grabbing and actors in land grabbing. So Brazil gets some land from other countries, but is also uh, suffering from land grabbing from them. Now, this is a simple story, um, a relatively uh, simple story explained in a simple way. This is another example that you can look up uh, later if you want to. Sometimes the story is quite difficult and you need a bit more complicated ways to tell them. This is another example from research uh, in our uh, 
a department where uh, uh, somebody uh, looks into uh, uh, race, actually a, a so-called uh, uh, orienteering race, where you have to both find your way and run fast at the same time. And two runners have been followed with GPS, and there, there's a quite uh, complicated uh, way ways to, to actually see what happened here, because these, ra these kind of races are not just about running a certain course. You have to find your own course, you have to decide uh, how to come to the different points where you have to actually check in. Uh, and sometimes uh, a wrong decision uh, is taken and then and people then actually get stuck <coughs> at, at a certain part of the course. And you can try to show that in a map, you can try to show that in a graph. This is a bit of a new type of graph where you can just, of course, uh, show the time that you run <coughs> the time scale and then if you are standing still or in the same place for a longer time, you can actually research where, where was that, and this ID, and this stop, a certain runner had a certain problem, it, it took them longer to, for them to stay. And you can actually even play around with, uh, with trying to uh, uh, distort the time scale, so the time scale here is actually uh, that, uh, that all the, the, um, the time scale, uh, or the, the, the distance scale is, is, is now uh, even, and the time scale is distorted when people stay uh, longer in certain places. Try to compare this. Now this becomes quite complicated because of the story being complicated. Now what you saw in oh, in, the, in those uh, examples, let me show you again, is that what you actually are doing quite a lot if you try to uh, show a story, if you try to find out about the data, is compare things. You have to compare things, um, uh, spatial phenomena in different ways. Uh, and that is often the way the comparison between the things is often the way that you could get a story. It's maybe not so interesting that there is a certain amount of people living in a certain municipality, but if you compare it to the uh, amount of resources in that municipality or the, the work that is actually available in that municipality, then it becomes an interesting story. So to provide all of this, um, uh, you can make maps. And we've seen, I've shown you some examples of maps that I've made. Uh, to, to, to try to tell you stories. Um, the role of the cartographer has changed a little bit, of course, now that we have these new tools, now that, now that we do this on the web, uh, because the new role of the cartographer is not so much uh, only uh, telling that story always himself, because he, he or she might uh, use uh, uh, software tools to do that. And then the role of the cartographer, cartographer becomes to provide <coughs> these tools that implement this idea of cartographic in intent. So if you code, if you program, you still are a cartographer. You, you code like a cartographer. You want to actually create code that can think like a cartographer. And that, that's when we come to the next, uh, we come to the next phase, is um, where a lot of these maps that we make nowadays are not like the ones I showed before, one of products that <coughs> was used to show a certain uh, story of, of, a, of a certain data set. Maps are also becoming, of course, part of this bigger thing that we call the spatial infrastructure. There's lots of data around, of course, and lots of these data is available all the time, and lots of these data in the geo domain is available in what we call spatial data infrastructure. So the government in many countries, I'm, uh, I'm sure in the UK it's not much different from the Netherlands, is making data available from all their different institutes, like the Met Office, like the, the Statistical Office, and they make them available uh, uh, as web services. And the problem here is that you actually, as a photographer, want to use a visualization which is totally optimized uh, for, for, your, for what you want to do, to tell that story. You want maps to be presenting a synthesis uh, of the data that is optimized for visualization. But the surroundings you are working in, the spatial data infrastructures, they are not geared or optimized for that at all. They are geared to maybe visualize the data, but then the data that you find in uh, uh, repository X or in, in uh, REST service Y. And they are certainly not used, uh, they are certainly not optimized to be used in combinations. And actually we saw that the combinations, the comparisons of the different data are, are where, where the strength uh, of the story in many cases is. So what we want to do here, we're, we're looking into ways to, when you use maps in the spark of, of these data infrastructures, to, you are actually combining these two worlds, the cartographer and the, and the data infrastructure, or I don't know if that's the word, web service uh, infrastructure. 
And to do that, you have to be, be sure that this mapping takes place and, and is taking place in a, in a, uh, in a correct and in in an optimized way within this web services environment. Now, this is a typical um, setup of how many of these map, map, map visualization services work at the moment. For those of you who are, uh, uh, know about that, uh, things like web map services uh, within, uh, within Inspire, for example. Uh, you have some, some spatial data, uh, and you have uh, somebody who sets up uh, a service, uh, a service configuration, for example, to do these mapping services and make a map file for map server or an, an SLD for, for, for a geo server, and get those kinds of softwares, or maybe you can use some, some proprietary software like ESRI. And then the, the user actually uses this map nowadays, of course, mostly in the web. But in this case, you are not really uh, 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 only be doing mapping inside the web map services, you want the, the, the mapping service, or the mapping actually to be part of the mapping service. So you want it to be an integrate, integrated uh, part of this whole web service environment, the spatial data infrastructure, whatever you want to call it. And in order to do that, there's a conceptual change needed between what is nowadays most done and what you can see in these big portals that, that, that serve out uh, visualizations for these national data infrastructures, where you have different SDI nodes, so different parts of the SDI, let's for example take the Met Office and the National Statistical Office, and they each have a solution for their mappings, and, and they both serve maps in, in a, uh, through a, some kind of a map service. Mm. And these can be combined, of course, technically it's not a problem, in different layers with opacity or whatever, but they are certainly not an optimal solution to your, to your visualization. What you actually want to do is you want to have a mapping engine or whatever you call that as part of the SDI, so the thing in here, which integrates not maps but data of these services and then creates a combined map which is optimized for the, for the combination, which gives you that synergy and, and cartographic intent and the cartographic quality that, that I, I try to, to achieve. Now there's many ways you can do that. We've been thinking about uh, trying to add something on top of that so that it could be done in a more or less uh, automatic way where the, the, the service configuration is, is compiled by some kind of formal map specification language and this is typically the kind of research we are doing in our group. Uh, to experiment with that kind of things we actually made a small architecture, I won't go into it here, maybe later if we have some time, I want to specifically demonstrate it. And the, the platform we use for that is what we call the Dutch National Atlas, it's just a website where we can experiment with uh, those kind of mappings um, of data which is coming directly from the Dutch infrastructure uh, and is put into a, a web service. Uh, uh, look there. <laughs> so, so basically what, you, what we created is a, an interface. It's actually created as, as HTML5, SVG, uh, using B3 mostly, uh, where you can choose a subject out of uh, uh, some uh, themes. And in this case, the, these themes actually represent these different nodes uh, actually <coughs> coming from different places in the SDI. Uh, where, for example, if we have only made a very small subselection here, you can look at the, the population, and you can say, for example, the population density per municipality in a certain year. Now, this is coming from the National Bureau of Statistics. They have an, actually nowadays an API where you can get all their data. So this list could have been much bigger because we could, could have chosen all the data that is in their API. But this is just an, an experiment to work for the So you make some mapping, and it's a nice way of mapping uh, the Netherlands. There's all the, the usual tools we're going over, so you can, for example, see uh, that there's uh, uh, more or less uh, density in the certain, uh, so this is the way I, I, you can, I live nowadays in Enschede. It's much den more densely populated than the surrounding uh, rural area. And then, of course, you can actually compare these kind of things uh, because you can get the data from the other uh, places. So, for example, from the, se from the same uh, data from a different year, it would be one possibility, so the population density per municipality of another year, and you could compare the two uh, over there, uh, see small differences, and, and try to see uh, uh, where there uh, has been a change over the years. Now, if I go back to my presentation briefly, you can actually compare space phenomena in various ways, and we try to uh, implement uh, most of them. So you can compare the different variables uh, of this uh, on the, in themes, on the same place and time, with a different variable. That would be the example if I, for example, would 
uh, do that here, and I would uh, pro uh, compare population density with the uh, population, uh, uh, I don't know, the, 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 the number of females, for example, the, the absolute number of females. And you would map that in a different way because that is better mapped in, the, in proportional circles. And then you can compare. It. Now, of course, you can compare them just like that, but we also wanted to do more. Uh, side by side is, is sometimes difficult. You can, of course, still see that n square here has a certain amount uh, in one and, and then in the other. But you can also, of course, try to uh, compare them in the same place by, for example, overlapping them. You want to get rid of the background then, of course. And then there's many tools that you can use in the graphics, and of course, because this is, this is SVD, you can play around with all kinds of things like the opacity to, to be able to make uh, one layer more opaque than the other, or even swipe like this uh, to see the differences. And this becomes it especially interesting if you have things which are not uh, different variables in the same place, but there are some differences, for example, in space, so you, you look at the same variable but in a different place, or it, uh, what also is quite, is quite useful in a with a different aggregation level. So for example, you want to compare the uh, population density per municipality with the population density uh, per uh, province in the Netherlands. You get two things which are not so easy to see if you put them on top of each other, of course. They might work better side by side like that. But even then, you can uh, make comparison easier if you put them on top of each other and then use this uh, notice opacity tool, which is not the, maybe the best one, although even then you can see some patterns here. Uh, but you could also use a swipe tool. Back, of course. And then you can see how differences are by uh, going through the data like that. There are, of course, more ways of comparing spatial. You can do it over time. I showed you, showed you that uh, uh, as the first example, different times, uh, another nice thing to, to, to do and if you want to implement, implement is longer time ranges and then some kind of an animation that you actually can play it back uh, over time. Uh, uh, that, that, that's of course also possible. You can even think of uh, changing expression. So uh, I showed you before that not always the map is the best way to, show, to look at the data. It could also be graph is more effective. And we've been uh, starting an experiment with that also. So you can actually also show the data as a graph and then highlight them. And you, this, this is still in the experimental. So of course, you want to hide uh, the, the, the corresponding province or the municipality highlight there, of course. And now it's actually showing the <coughs> I should see this. The problem here is, of course, that this doesn't always work if you have something on the uh, level of uh, the, 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 some uh, what is it, 400 something uh, municipalities in the Netherlands. It becomes a, a graph which is not all that useful. It becomes very big, but you can very detailed, but you can still see small, uh, and you can see some patterns. Okay. How we actually made that is that uh, the, uh, the, um, uh, there is this, this SDI, so the, the, the National Data Geodata Infrastructure is of course the part that we did, we don't make, we, we are not involved in that, that is an existing thing, and the idea is to build something which could use any data out of that uh, spatial data infrastructure. Luckily of course these spatial data infrastructures exist by uh, merit of, of standardization, so there's all matter of uh, standards that you can use to get data out of there. So in this case, we use the, the web feature services that all of these data nodes uh, have in, uh, implemented or even have to have implemented or they, they, they are obliged to implement according to the standardization uh, uh, rules in the, in the Netherlands and in, even in Europe to some extent. So we get data out of there, if possible, as GeoJSON. Uh, if not, we have a, a middle layer that, that has some services to help this, uh, so where there's, for example, a GML to GeoJSON proxy, so most of the data, <coughs> is, uh, although the, the WFS service uh, standard allows for GeoJSON to be uh, put out, uh, not all the actual software is installed, uh, implemented, uh, so we have a proxy to, to, to convert it to GeoJSON so that the client side will only have to deal with GeoJSON or, or uh, topo JSON, even nowadays. 
Uh, and because there are some other services like an aggregator service, if the data is not available on, on, a, on the aggregated level, we can aggregate it ourselves. And there are some base maps and, and the actual metadata of the data is also, of the address is also in that middle. And then the end is, uh, is D3 actually, mostly, so just yeah, basically just an HTML5 uh, page with JavaScript uh, and SVG, which is, uh, is using uh, all the D3 uh, tools that, that many people here are familiar with to create the actual, uh, the actual interface. So with that, I'm at the end of my story. I, I can still see the show some examples if you want to, or we can discuss uh, the architecture. Uh, it's possible. Thank you. Thank you.